Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Black Myth Wukong Let's Play. So we're gonna head into that door and go down the stairs and figure out who's asking for help and also take care of our second war cart. Save us, or save me, I guess. We have some options, because I think we can jump down, we can go inside. Okay, it was just one of the corpse. I thought that was a flaming blade. He's gonna explode. If they stand up and they activate, then they explode. Oh, that's just a will. Ooh. That is the guy with the blade, and it's gonna give us a transformation. And a Buddha head. I wonder if the Buddha head has another one of the Yun. The fifth one is the last one that we need. Ooh. Ooh. We got more company. Uh, actually, let's just back up. Someone's coming from our right. He just fell on us. I'm worried he's gonna explode. Oh, someone's behind us too. This is getting messy. We just need to explode one of them. Yeah, there we go. And they should just kill themselves, basically. There we go. Uh, I think we can take another drink. The black faced ghost. Let's see what he does. We slam our blade on the ground, erupting and a puddle of lava, damaging others. Passive is slightly increase the speed. We can charge up our staff nodes. Okay, I mean, not bad, but I don't think we're gonna need it. Our next upgrade for the spirit will probably be the frog once we get the fifth and final frog of this stage. Ah, we got poisoned. Okay, I'm gonna wait till the poison wears off and then go grab that well after we take a drink. Hard to imagine a wooden Buddha head surviving in this hot climate. I also wonder why the Mountain of Flame is ablaze again, because according to the original journey, Wukong should have fanned it 49 times and put out the source of the fire. And for those who have no idea what happened in the original story, the reason why this area is particularly hot is not because of any volcanoes, but when Wukong was rebelling against the Celestial Court, he got captured and was thrown into the Celestial Cauldron to be burned alive for 49 days in the hopes of making him into some sort of medicine. And that didn't work. It instead gifted him his all-seeing eye as the smoke inside the cauldron basically gave him better, uh, or basically his eyes got the ability to see through transformations. 
And once he escaped the cauldron, he kicked it. Uh, and not the cauldron fell down, but the altar that held the cauldron had bricks. And those bricks fell down into this area. And because they sustained the fire for the celestial cauldron, they basically have this eternal fire effect. And it made this area basically burn forever. And thus it became the Mountain of Flames. Ooh, new curio. Slightly increase how fast we can pick up our staff stance. Prayer beads. Precious gem. I want to say Hupo is amber in English. Might be off on that though. Not sure. Ooh, I feel like the update changed my settings. Hold on. Real quick. Yep. Just had to change vertical sync. I think that's the main one. Okay. Oh, we, we exited the same way we came in. So going right doesn't lead us to the cart. It gives us a curio. We can't go out this way. I'm just going to hug the wall on the right and see if we cover all the exits. This one had a will for us to absorb, but I don't think we are allowed to jump out of this. So that's no. And if we keep hugging right, we get the final exit. Okay. Alright, this way we make sure we don't miss anything. It's a lot of faces. We just got your transformation. He swings. Definitely looks pretty crazy here. Oh, we have the cart. And once again, super narrow. How are we supposed to close this gap without getting burnt? We could use the fire protection cloak. I could go invisible and try to sneak up on him. We'll take the... Let him burn and then we'll take the invisible route first. He saw us. Okay, let's just see if this works. Doesn't flinch, this thing. How about big head? Flinch a little there. Uh, I was hoping to parry the flame, but I don't think that's possible, actually. Just throw the cloak on. Alright, max nodes. Let's get him one big charge slam. And when we're in the air, we can actually kind of dodge that fire. But we are... Are we burning? That status effect looks a little weird. Oh, fire protection. Right, shield with the fire is not being burnt. It's because we used the cloak. Wasn't too bad. And I also think we might actually get healing effect off the ground because we're using the cloak. So like if we stand on this fire, we actually heal. Yeah. 
who's gonna come here and save us. Uh, the same trick. Getting tied up on a tree. Except this time, I don't think Red Boy's doing it. Save me. Young monk, come save me. It's a fox. So this must be the mistress's daughter. Monkey brother, save me. She... Something's wrong in the mountains. Only I escaped. But I got captured by monsters on the way down. I've been hanging here for three days. But I've been lucky enough to... Bump into you. Take mercy on me and save me. The king is right. The sound of this little girl is seductive. Oh! Duhua. Why, Rufo? There's like a couple of pairs of little kids who served the Red Boy from the original novel. Uh, they're in a very different form here. Okay, let's see. One blows wind, because it's fast as wind, and as... as rushed as fire. That, that little head is the fire one. Can't catch up to him. I also used my fire protection cloak earlier, or else this battle would be... Quite easy. Uh, should I be targeting the one on the ground or the one in the air? So they don't have any, their body anymore, and they feel liberated. Can I get up to hit you? Just testing this? Nope. Alright, we're gonna hit Zhu first. Wait, did he just blow fire at the- okay. Blow fire the wind and the wind cast the fire at us. Wait, he's just knocking him? We are burnt, so I'm gonna use that. She should be the daughter of the Jade Face Fox, which is the mistress of the bull demon from the original novel. I think this is when we're supposed to go get the head. If we can get, uh, nope, 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 nope. We don't want to get hit by that wind, and we don't want him to roll into us. But we're kind of trapped here. Head versus head. He's tired, he can't move anymore. But I can't see that. Yeah, there we go. At least we can see when he does stuff. Nope, don't switch targets. Crash into both. Ooh, he's on the ground, he's on the ground. Not anymore. Back to him. Let's do it. He just knocked him away. We're gonna do four nodes on him. Now, we have a lot of health. Not too worried. They also don't hurt that much, so we have time to heal. Just have to keep our camera on both so we know what's going on with each of them. Our fire protection is about to come back too, so we can heal from that afterwards. I remember there was a pair called, um... Like the cloud from the fog and the fog out of the cloud. There's a couple pairs of kids that served the red boy back in the original novel. Alright, we'll wait till the head stops again. Uh, I can't get through the wind like this. How about now? All right, we're gonna use this. Uh, 
and see we heal. Actually, that's from the node. Hmm. Maybe we don't heal from this. The fire that he sets. Alright, he's down. Hmm. Alright, he's just... We're gonna use that as an obstacle for him to dash into us, and then he gets on the ground, and then we are gonna just hit him. And then... Don't... Don't you leave. And fall down, please. Fall down, please. Nope. Stay in there. So we want to get behind... This big head. Nope. Nope. We did hit him. I guess I could trade health with him. But how about you crash down into this head? And then that's our chance. I can't stop him now, he's in the air. Ooh. There we go. But it did knock us. Blame the camera for that hit. Oh, get the big head back on the next time he drops to the ground. Alright, where's the big head? Where can I use... Wait, the big head? Oh, it's right over here. Mm, kind of in the corner. Not sure if I can get behind it. Oh, it's just made of metal now, but we have to charge. Come on, come on, hit it, hit it. There we go. Check out my head. As rush as fire, as fast as wind. She technically should be our niece, just because the bull demon is our sworn brother. Ooh, Bajie's back. Wait, Bajie killed, killed her mother in the original novel. Monster, what's your name? If you lie, I'm going to take a rake. There's such a danger, thanks. Daughter of the bull demon. Name's Ping Ping. He doesn't have a daughter. I remember you. Right. The jade faced fox was killed by you. Right. Bati's like, uh, uh, killed your mom. Been living with dad ever since mom died. The Iron Fan Princess was nice and took me in as an adopted daughter. Wait, the Yaksha boy's back, uh, the, the red boy. He came back from Goyin's place. But recently, his mood changed and summoned his troops back from his previous cave, like the two big heads we just saw. It's like the bull demon is so powerful. We can't beat him even fighting together. He's confused why the red boy can imprison both of them. Obviously, no one expects their son to attack you know, the parents. The fox is lying. Right, so it's ablaze again because of the fire the red boy is spreading. Father's life is a stake. Come help my family, please. I guess that's... Old Demon's voice. There's a lot of danger here. Keep this bug. 
it will come in handy when you're in danger. The voice is familiar. He's going to go check it out. Not enough time. I'll lead the way ahead. Hurry up and follow. Okay, let's grab the shrine first. They're getting the entry together. Okay, they're two separate entities. Ziru Huo is one person, Kwa Rufeng is another person. Many years ago, they are two just young gangsters who hanged out in the city. And in the at night, they often just slept underneath the city wall, but you know they shared quite a bond together. Initially, they had really no ties to society, and they didn't really care about you know anything. And oftentimes, when they get into a fight, they would you know sometimes hit a little too hard. And once, when they were robbing a young man from a rich family. They accidentally went a little too hard and killed the young man. So, because, you know, they caused death in their robbery attempt, they got sentenced to execution and was locked away in prison waiting for the sentence to carry it out. Uh, basically, usually you do it after the fall. And when they're locked in prison, one of the gangsters told the other, you know, our life have been good, very liberating. And, you know, if we die, we die. The only regret is that we can't, you know, have fun together anymore. The other gangster said, If you want to have fun one last time, it's not going to be that hard. I am the descendant of the tribe of people who... Like, remove one's head, drop one's head. And I have actually a little bit of a skill. And he whispered in his ear, you know, this, this ability that he has teaching him. And during the fall, when they got carried out to the market for their execution, the executioner, you know, sprayed alcohol onto the blade to clean it basically before he used it to, to cut their head off. And as the blade dropped, their head also dropped, but it jumped into the air. And it made all the people who were watching the execution based a cheer. And from that point on, their two heads flew into the mountains to become monsters. And one's name is As Rush As Fire, and the other one's As Fast As Wind. I don't think this was the original story for these uh, in the original novel. They didn't really get a lot of background story time, because they're just very minor characters that service the Red Boy. I'll grab the shrine. I'm still questioning whether we missed anything in that big open area. But I think we'll grab this save point first. We probably want to heal. We are completely out of mana. Nothing new unlocked there. Nothing. Oh, we do have more gold thread. We have three pieces now. There's a lot of things we want to make with the poison hook. All right, I'm going to make this shirt first, just in case we get a chance to do a poison build. It'll take some resetting. We honestly should also make a trip to the 6-6 village. We have a lot of stat upgrade material that we have not used. We purchased like six copies once we entered chapter five. More health for us. Excellent. Just gonna take a look down here. We came in from that area over there. She jumped up, but I don't think we can jump up. You follow the fox, and yeah, I think this is just one open area. Shizhar, 
What did the pig whisper to you? You know, I can let go of the mother killing issue with him. But why is he so hostile towards me? Follow me close. Because... Right, the six troops. Ah, so there's another two pairs of them. She's mentioning how she used to play in these mountains with the red boy because he's technically her half-brother? Right, because red boy's mom is the iron fan, the actual wife. And her mom is the jade-faced fox, the mistress. Now why don't you take the same path I take? Why, why take the hole and make me kind of go alone here? Like you can fit in here. Now actually guide us. Two legs can't beat four. Yeah, she just crawled through that side. He's up ahead. I do think we do have to make a trip back to the beginning area and talk to that cow, the vanguard. Because he, oh, that's the bull demon. He's a white bull. He's just, he's huge. He can actually, I mean, in the original novel, when he fought Wukong at the end, he grew himself so large that the celestial court sent troops to basically tame him because he poked his head into the celestial court. But he looks like super thin, frail, and old. Father sound I mean we see him, right, yeah. He's right there. Right, her brother's fire. Sealing the road up the mountain. The mother's, I guess her stepmom's fan, Iron Fan. She's gonna lead her lead us towards Iron Fan Princess, I guess. She's called a princess because she's like a Raksha princess, I believe, in the original novel. There's not too much about her background either. I think they mentioned a couple times in her the poems. That looks like a road, doesn't it? But we can't. Okay. Alright. We'll follow her. Because that path is definitely blocked. Back to human form? Jump down? Secret path to my mother's private chambers. She should still be in there. Mother always favored brother. She might not give us the fan willingly. Or easily. So we just we just jump. How about you jump, I jump? Ah, uh, we'll go. Cauldron Valley. Nearby, there is Mother's friend who lives here as well. If we can ask him to come with us to plead with Mother for the fan. So she's going to go look for that person. I don't know who she's talking about, but... We'll see who comes back with her. And we're on our own again. Ooh. Ooh. The fire version of the rocks. Okay, 2-0 no was enough to kill them earlier. 
<laughs> knocked us down. It's gonna fall down, right? Different entry. Oh, Leah, Leah. The king of the oh the 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 main city in the kingdom of Ji Sai. They have a particular temple. I guess this one will be a Taoist temple, considered using the term Guan, Yan Huo, Smoke and Fire Temple. And they specialize in taking in uh, basically kids who are from families that have. Maybe they broke the law. The family maybe broke the law and, you know, the clan got wiped, but not clan execution. Now the kids have nowhere to go. You can think of them as orphans. And they teach them how to cultivate. And because of that, this particular temple has a very good reputation. And even many families who are still there, they sent their kids who are not really, you know, uh, I guess, matching the expectation of the parents. Right, they're maybe not studying as hard, or maybe they're just uh, lazy. They're sending them to this temple to learn. And this story is told by a particular uh, Yuan Wai, so a rich family. And in this story, the main character, or the the kid that's being sent here, his name is Zhao Sun. Um, just Sun is three. Zhao is his clan name. Maybe it means he's the third son in the family. It could just be a random name because. Uh, sometime Chinese names when they want to use like um, John Doe or something like that, it's they use the numbers. Huh. And the reason why they send him or the reason why he got in trouble is that he went to a low tier prostitution house, right? Golan is like a low tier prostitution house. And he was spending the money of another rich family from the Wong clan. And because he spent his money, he got sued by the Wong clan's father. So basically, the, the son is at the prostitution house with him. He was spending someone else's money, and that someone else's rich dad sued him. So he's under arrest, and people have put up his pictures in the city, and there's people looking for him. And this time, one of the Taoist monks from this smoke and fire temple saw this, and decided to take him in. From that point on, Zhao San practiced every day with all his senior disciples, listens to the scriptures, and finished all the chores and jobs and missions given to him by his master. And a couple days, or I guess someday down the line, he is following his master's order to go down the mountain. And as he's going down, he sees a family who's trying who's on their way up to burn incense and pray at the temple and with this family are a couple females of the family who's with them and one of the mistress that is i guess the family's mistress or maybe a concubine right maybe not a mistress at this point so official concubine her name is may now and she's getting beaten up by the main wife so the main wife's picking on the concubine and seeing this, he makes a move and saves the concubine. But after saving her, he's a little worried that... So basically, he grabbed her and, and saved her away from the family that's going up. He's a little worried that she'll get recaptured by, you know, her family and they might punish her more for, you know, being saved by outsider. And thus, he brought her back into the temple. As she has nowhere else to turn now, she feels quite content to be taken in by this young master and she becomes a disciple in the temple as well yeah you can have female Taoist disciples there's no gender restriction like i mean buddhism they're nuns but usually it's all man like if you have a nunnery it would be all female no man allowed inside if you have a regular buddhist temple it's all male and no female allowed inside to reduce the chance of you know sexual seduction and temptation uh, in the beginning because she knows that he saved her she was quite grateful towards him and would help him take care of things like patching up clothes watch it wash his clothes and everything and she even offered to become a dalu so the taoist pair a taoist couple with him 
uh, on the road to cultivation together, but he refused. So she actually asked many times, and he refused every time. A couple years later, Zhao Sun, our, our boy in the beginning, actually mastered quite a bit of the cultivation, and it got to a point where the teacher is going to host an official ascendance ceremony for him. So he has a chance to get on a path towards immortality, and this girl is invited to attend. And they got brought to this flowing lava. So they're standing on a cliff, and there's flowing lava like a river down below. And he takes over a scroll given by him by his teacher, the, the boy who's ready to ascend, and is told to jump into the lava. And the girl, uh, she still wants to become a Taoist pair and cultivate together with him, gets the well wishes from everyone else because they know she likes him. And she also steps into the lava after him. And when smoke and fire rises again from this lava river, they're reborn as the fire river guardians or, or Shuja, like messengers. And they will live eternally in the fire river. So they become these rock creatures. I mean, that's one way to get immortality, I guess. I, I don't know if the master lied. Just not particularly in the form that you might be thinking of. Another one. It's gonna dash at us. I want it to finish its dash. And then we do this. Same moveset as the regular rocks. Ooh, new enemy. Buddha head and a shield? This isn't gonna work. Unless he charges and gives me an opening. Nope, we'll break the shield first. The shield is really tough. Out of stamina. Oh, of course, fire. I want him to charge me again. See if we can get an opening there. Right, he should exhaust at a certain distance. Ah, uh, crashes down forward. Great. Wait, wait, wait. We dragged him too far out. He reset. Okay, no problem. We'll just fight him normally, I guess. Probably better than trying to hit charge attacks. Fire. There we go. He's a Raksha. Earth Raksha. Earth Rakshas, or Di Luosha, descendants of the Sea Rakshas, they were born on the road of exile, and because of the spirit and will of where they were born is different from their homeland, they didn't inherit the giant bodies of their ancestor, the Sea Raksha. But despite this difference, they are still loyal to the Raksha lady, which in this case would be the Iron Fan Princess, the surviving princess of the Rakshas. And like their ancestors before, they strictly obey and follow the Iron Fan deity, and which they're calling her or immortal, and whatever rule she set, they're diligent in practicing their spells, and they even got rid of some of their bad habits within uh, basically the 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 human realm. There are many rumors that says the Rakshas like to eat human flesh 
And because of these rumors, the villages near the fire mountains would often tribute old people as basically food tribute in the stone shrines that they have as human sacrifice for the Rakshas. But in reality, the Rakshas of the fire mountains does not eat people at all. And because of how big and strong they are compared to regular mortals, the Raksha lady purposely designed a specialized shield for them to teach them to defend more and attack less. But if you, you know, corner them, they will breathe fire. And despite the fact that the Earth Rakshas have made many changes, when people see their terrifying look, they're still scared and runs away. But in the eyes of these earth rakshas, the sight and noise of these noisy humans who, you know, scream and run, they're just equally as terrifying. So when basically when like an animal see you clamor around, you're just as scary as them. Um, if we go in on poison, it's not a bad idea, I guess. If we do that though, can change something like this we get better stats and the special passive where if we go transformation if we go invisible for a period of time we don't spend any stamina which is actually really good right, we're basically taking like singular pieces with special attributes and using it together Alright, before we continue down this cauldron valley, we're going to make a trip over here. And then we're also going to go back to where we had the cow vanguard and see if he has something to say after we took out two of the carts blocking the way up the mountain, which is what he asked us to do. Well, technically he asked us to clear all the carts, but we'll see if he has any new requests. All right, haven't been back in a while. Got any more of those pills? Right, we we'll get the free one. And they have new things in the shops here as well. Ooh, we get a scorpion tail for this armor piece to cover our tail. That's actually kind of cool. All right, the shops update. We have a new recipe for relatively long time. We can increase our attack. Crit rate, crit damage after taking this. And we can sell all of this as well. New recipe, just showing it off. Alright, we max our health, our mana, our defense. I think we just get stamina next. I mean, fire resistance would be super helpful for just this stage. And if we get like 22 points here, we can like change it to other things. I mean, stamina is also good. Let me just get as much stamina as we can here. Let's see what everyone else has for sale that's new after we cleared a chapter. Upgrade materials. Right, we have enough for not the final tier, but we now have, we now have three slots for our original coconut alcohol, which now looks Crazy impressive. Yeah, if we get one last upgrade, we can get 50% heal per drink. Right now, I think it's like 46%, which is still better than what we currently are using. This is maxed. It can be upgraded one more time when we meet the Gourd Man again. So we might as well upgrade this. This is good for clones. Eight drinks. Heal all our clones when we drink. Uh, 
Um, let's reset these. This is 36% healing plus a little speed increase. We're going to go to 50% healing. Crit. Image reduction. We can poison ourselves. There are builds where this is good. Greatly increase the amount we heal when we're really low. I actually think that might not be so bad. Increase the amount of invincibility time we have when we are dodging. Get a perfect dodge. Oh, there's a set amount of chance where we don't actually consume the alcohol that we drink. So like over the course of like nine drinks right now, we're bound to get like maybe two back. So that's actually not bad as well. The tiger might be selling materials as well. We can get some gold threat, hopefully. I don't think he has anything new in between. Yep, just double checking. Oh, no gold thread, but we can buy basically infinite amount of these two. Gold thread after New Game Plus, I think. Alright, now we go back and check out what happened with the Cal Vanguard and we'll move on. Yep, he's waiting for us here. He is a character, so... I believe he will lead us to the hidden area for this stage if we do what he asked us to do. Basically deal with the carts. It's behind us, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, he's right there. Standing here? No one dares to come. You know, wish there was more underworld troop for me to enjoy killing. Listen. He sent out five element carts. He thinks the carts are just a distraction. He's asking us to go up the mountain and check on that little bastard, basically. On the red boy. He says, the five element cards, of course, there's five cards. How many cards have you destroyed? You go first. I'm going to guard the gate here. Even though it's called, so the old king used to say, the, the bull king used to say, even though it's called the five element cards, it's actually your five internal organs, which we kind of saw when we read the first codex. Okay, we got the repeatings. So I think we exhausted his dialogue, and that's basically all you have to do, I think. You just basically keep talking to him as you beat the carts, and we'll get to see where it takes us. Um, we don't have to just run back. Let me use... this. Oh no, we went back to the village, because that's the last one. It's fine. We're teleporting back to where we were in the Cauldron Valley. Oh no. Hmm. The load screen gave us the... That's weird. I mean, we did teleport to this, so going here is probably right. Oh, 
Wrong button. There we go. Ooh. That was actually well camouflaged. I did not see that at all. Charge. I gotta wait for the charge. We gotta wait till it falls down. Oh. It did a different move. Okay. Not what I was expecting. Just wanna get rid of the burn. Wait. Why a new entry? Oh. They're different now legends say back during the period of Huangdi or the yellow emperor so way back there was someone named Tao Zheng who had the title of Ning Feng Zi and he learned from the deities and immortals a spell the five color smoke and fire spell and after learning this spell he tied himself onto a rack and put the rack above the fire to roast and some say that he ascended from this process and others say that he burned himself to death and no one really know what happened eventually in the kingdom of Ji Sai Guo we have the smoke and fire temple so we're continuing the story that we had from the other rock creature and they say this temple was founded on the principle of this spell the five color smoke and fire spell and that the story now, this legend is uh, said from a monk who escaped from that temple. Now, this escaped monk, his teacher was the leader of this temple. And there was one day in the past when he was accompanying his master to go into the market, the escape Taoist who's telling this story, and the master who's the leader of the temple, the two of them, were going into the market in the city to buy some alcohol. And on the way, they met a fugitive who was on the run. And because at the time, there weren't many people, there were basically a lack of disciples in the temple. And the fact that this escaped prisoner has some money on him, because, you know, he used the money from the Vong clan at the prostitute house. He basically stole some money from him. They took him in and brought him back to the temple. And this escaped prisoner, of course, is called Zhao Sun connecting with the previous story and you know he was so basically he's one of those guys who is like in the entourage of rich people so he was like basically in the entourage of the Wong clan's son and thus he get access to the money and he basically took some for himself which is how he ended up like this and you know they don't think his crime is that big because there's a lot of people that are disciples in the temple who used to commit robbery and other things that are more severe. And because of this, once Zhao San joined them as the disciple, he ended up far worse than he was before. It's a 10 times worse because he's basically learning from people who are serious criminals. And then one day, it was his turn to go down the mountain to commit a robbery. So we're getting a very different story of what's going on in the temple here by an escaped monk from the temple. And the reason why they take turns to go down and commit robbery is because they need money to run the temple. And on this day when he went down, he saw a rich family come up and there were you know females in this group. So not only did he want money, he also thought the concubine is quite cute. So he snatched her up the mountain with him. Oh, we're getting a very different version of the story here. And this concubine's locked away in this temple. And every day she has to help all of them wash their clothes and cook for them and frequently take a beating. So she hated Zhao San with her life, but she can't overpower any of them. So she gets abused all the time. And so she's basically 
holding it in, trying to look for any opportunity to escape. Many years later, when she heard that there was going to be an ascension ceremony, the temple, the, the monks of the temple took her as well, arrested, but basically grabbed her to go to the ceremony as well. And they're standing on this cliff above the flowing lava. Zhao San got the scroll and is preparing to jump into the fire river to ascend. But he wants this concubine to go with him. Hearing this, all the other monk kind of cheered. Be like, ooh, getting the girl with you. And she's super afraid. But all the other monk, uh, listening to what their master says, pushed her off the cliff. So basically she just got shoved down there. And I guess he jumped too. As their body was charred in this lava, the scroll, the spell with the scroll absorbed the energy and the lava filled into their head, into their skull, expanding their head many, many times until finally their new body was forged and they were able to stand up in the lava. Now you can't see their face at all and they're shaking in pain but they are running towards the source of this lava in the Black Mountain. So the escaped monk who's telling this story, the reason why he escaped is because he's the one who pushed this concubine in. And no matter how much his master, the leader of the temple, explained that this is their evolution towards getting you know, immortality, he no longer believed. So different moveset because it's the female or the male, it's a different one. And they jump. And they kick. I think they hide much better. I didn't see either of them. Is this one? Yeah, okay, okay. This is the guy, this is the guy. Uh, uh, what am I doing? I, ooh, ooh. Okay. We have the turtle bounty hunter who has the spirit for transformation down there. But we have to jump down into lava, so either we activate our fire protection cloak. Yeah, I was just charging and backing up and uh ended up falling down. Yeah, the female virgins, they hide so much better, but a lot fragile and uh, a little bit smaller too in size. Alright, we know, we know you're one of them. Ooh, fancy chest. We lost half of our health coming down the fall, and I think we fell into the lava and then got hit. Ooh, I thought that was going to miss. camera just he cornered us I don't think it was uh, probably could have gone we could have froze him or something like that but I thought I could wiggle out of there Yeah, 
Yeah, she definitely dies in one hit. But I don't think we need to do that. Hmm, they still traded some damage. I thought we could maybe kill them with one light combo. Alright, any way to go down without losing half of our health? I don't think so. Alright. Alright, I'm not going to that corner. And we're just gonna dump our spell. Don't get trapped against the wall with him. Now, can we stand on lava? Yes, we can. I think it's because we have the cloak on. Ooh, material for weapons. Okay. Ah, oh, right here. Increase the third or fourth heavy attacks. So basically attack three times or twice and do a heavy, two light heavy, three light heavy. That's a passive and the active is we smash the mace down after a jump. Okay. I don't think we can get back up unless we take the shrine, so we're supposed to walk on lava. Let me guess, rock? Oh, different thing. They drop rest the ingredients. Fire spirit sand. Yeah, new ingredient. Fire spirit boys. These are these are tones. These are boys. In ancient texts, they say that the fire spirit sand. It's like a reddish sand color. It's not poisonous and it's used to strengthen both yin and yang. And it's one of the best sands to use to make pills. And many of the alchemists who are into medicinal pills want to purchase this for their next batch of medicine. But these fire spirit sands are the treasure harvested from these mountain spirits and monsters and mortals rarely get to see it. So it's one of those goods that have, they say it has a price, but there's no market for it. There's no supply, essentially. Now, there was a man who's particular into these curious objects, rarities. His name was called Cheng Ming. He's quite poor, and everyone in his family looked down on him. But he knows that this fire spirit sand comes from the body of these, they're calling them fire spirit boys. Maybe this is like a young pupae form and they can harvest into, they can become something else. Maybe that's why they're called tongzi. So he wanted to get into business for uh, these fire spirit sand because it's priceless good. So he sold everything he had 
went into the mountains and swore that he wasn't going to stop until he catch one of these things. And he spent many days wandering the mountains, but obviously he didn't find anything. And even the wooden shack that he stayed in, in the mountains, it burned down. He doesn't even know who burned it. So he got quite angry and is super impatient, standing in front of his burned down wooden shack, you know, stomping his feet, cursing out at the world. And suddenly from the ground came this reddish earthworm. So basically these one of these boys, half its body is hanging in the air and the other half is buried in the ground. And it has the face of Shan Cai Tongzi, I guess the red boy's face. Right? Shan Cai is the name that Guan Yin gave red boy after he became one of the disciples. And it means to gain wealth. People actually pray to Shan Cai Tongzi for, for wealth. Usually, you know, standing next to Guan Yin. As a, so basically, this is considered a boyish face. It does not look like one, but okay. And he sees, you know, Cho Ming, the guy who's here, he's stomping the ground, cursing. So he looks, the Cho Ming looks the, like the evil one. So his baby face started to cry. And Cho Ming then roared out again, trying to scare it and wants to stop the monster from crying. And then suddenly this childish face turned into an angry look and drilled himself into the ground and disappeared. After it disappeared... Cho Ming realized that this is the fire spirit boy. So he started to jump up and down, I guess, in joy, or he's trying to use the shaking of the ground to lure the monster out again. But because he was so noisy, and perhaps perhaps because he was so noisy, the monster, you know, came out of the ground again and then shot a fireball towards him. And he couldn't dodge in time, so he got hit by the fireball and he's burning and rolling in pain, rolling on the ground. His clothes is burned to nothing. And then he realized he doesn't have the ability to harvest these fire spirit sand. So he started to cry. And these fire spirit boys started to giggle and laugh. And they drilled their way next to him. And at this time, he grabbed a rock and smashed it on top of this monster's head. Smashing his face in, essentially. And using this trick of just basically jumping around, throwing a tantrum, luring these little naive little boys to his side he smashed many of them in and harvested quite a bit of fire spirit sand and he doesn't tell other people how he does it and because of this he's the only supplier and he became quite famous and rich and well known as a medicinal herb gatherer my only issue is they they do not look like a baby's face Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now they have four arms. Oh, this one actually kind of looks like a baby's face. I take it back. These that don't have arms. Maybe it's just the horns. No, I, I just the two horn underneath the mouth just looks like a beard. See, that looks like a baby face because there's no horn going below the chin. Someone else was shooting something. There we go. So many of these. Look, monkey. Wait. This one's not like that one. King, this one is the monkey. Looks the same. It's definitely another pair of the, the kids who are servants of the red boy. And they've been sent here to take care of a monkey threat. But one of them is more of like the, the childish, dumb one who sees us as a monkey. The other one's like, no, that's not the one. Basically because we're the destined one and not Wukong. You can't be a, a monster, can you? Here? If I just back up, don't you just burn? Uh, this lava is just for decoration. Like, I thought I was using the fire protection cloak. He's just a fun guy. Ow. 
now. Fire dates. Ooh. Okay. We got a cart. And something else with wings in front of it. How did we get here? Okay, I think we came from over here. We're missing a little bit of mana. It would be nice if we can find a shrine first. I think that's a female, so she will try to jump me. And we'll just kill her. That's also a female. That's a male. So headbutt twice. Wait, he's burning us somehow. Okay, so the fire that he causes will burn, but the lava doesn't. Ow. Wait, is... Okay, the tree's not moving, the lava's flowing. I was like... That's just the obstacle illusion. Ooh! We got ourselves a elite! A burning leader? Get rid of the fire. The AoE is really big. Alright, we'll probably have to just use parry to dodge the damage on those. Like this. Uh, still hit us with a second little explosion. Passive burns getting us. We should just do this. Now you die. Uh, now you die. Oh, exploded right on us. Ooh, new material for a new weapon, perhaps? Maybe armor? Have to wait till we get to a shrine to find out. All right, within the. Fire Mountains, the person who spoils the red boy the most is the soil deity here. But the red boy doesn't like him back. Just like how his father and mother treats the soil deity. Okay, so it's like basically sees him as an outsider because he's not family. And no matter, you know, how much he spoils him or do for him, doesn't feel like he's, you know, close. Then one day, the red boy started to clamor that he wanted to create a rock vanguard just like the one they have in the Yellow Wind Ridge. So he made this. The Bull Demon and the Iron Fan Princess, you know, can't really control their son. He's doing what he wants. And oh, actually doesn't want to help. Doesn't want to lend a hand as well. Basically ignoring their son here. But the Soil Deity agreed. 
So he's spoiling him again. And he even went ahead and thought that just having a rock creature is not going to be enough to entertain the red boy. So he added many more rock creatures to combine into it to make a really, really giant one. And instead of just having like a head with two legs, like the rock vanguard in the Yellow Wind Ridge, he added two arms for it and also legs that could stand up. So basically he made a fancier version of the rock vanguard. And this particular giant rock creature is stronger, is quite strong, extraordinarily strong. And most of the time it would just submerge itself in the flowing lava. But anytime an enemy would come in or when its master summons it, he will jump out of the river. Now the red boy didn't take delight in how the soil deity made all these decisions without asking him. So he didn't like the fact that he made this batch of rock monsters, right? Could they combine together into this, this vanguard? And most of the time he only interacts with the vanguard. Now, because the red boy followed his mother to live in Dian, the palace elsewhere, the soil deity arranged the rest of these rock creatures that combine together into this giant monster within the Cauldron Valley. And when the red boy came back to surround the mountain, these creatures helped out quite a bit. So I think it's hinting at the fact that the soil deity is on the red boy's side and has also betrayed the bull demon here because this creature is helping them in blockading the mountain, essentially. Now, can I find a shrine? Uh, we bypass one of the carts in hope of finding a shrine. And we're not having any luck. And honestly, we're just feeling a little bit more lost because we came this way, right? We got the tree. We got the tree here. We activated him. We fought him. So maybe if we keep going forward. Who woke up? Who's going to be jumping me soon? Oh, oh, oh. We'll ignore that. I don't know where I'm going, but it seems like I can jump higher and higher until now. Now we're just sitting duck for that fireball. No, we can't make this. So we came this way, but we didn't fight any of the... Alright, we came from this river to that river. Right. But we didn't fight the cart. Alright, the cart's right here. Uh, we're not exactly in the best shape to fight the cart, but... Might not have a choice. Uh, I don't think the card's active. I want to kill this thing first. If he lets me. You know what? We are on fire, so... Can he jump to our body so I can hit both of them? There we go, there we go. Can we hit both? Yes. What is that move? Ooh, that was range. We could have died. That was a huge heal chunk because we were low. So it's 50% plus whatever extra we get from the alcohol soaking material. Okay, so the third card is down. Oh, I know what this is. 
Okay, we'll end the episode here. We'll leave a little cliffhanger and we'll come back and interact with this. It says pool and you can see there's a little thing here and uh, we'll find out what that is next time. So until then, bye.